Hey everyone, this is Kaj and I'm one of the two people behind the Brain Jacket YouTube channel. In this video I'll be sharing my updated visual and graphic settings for Stalker Gamma version 0.9. I mentioned this the last time we did a breakdown like this, but I think it's important to reiterate that I spent a significant amount of time adjusting visuals to match the mood of the video that I'm making at the time. So your results may vary if you're trying to match a specific video. This video will be broken up into several parts for those of you who are only looking for info on a specific aspect of my setup. Timestamps are on screen now and in the video description so navigate to wherever you need to. With all that being said, let's take a look at my mod setup. I use a few additional mods on top of my vanilla gamma install to maximize visual fidelity while I play. Those mods are the Zone Reality Texture Pack for HD 2K textures, the KVMAS Azetric Model Merge Project for HD Stalker models, and the Ultimate Gamma Gun Pack for additional weapons. One important thing to note is that the latter two mods I mentioned, especially the Gun Pack, do change gameplay balance and mechanics, so if it's your first time ever trying Gamma, I don't recommend starting with those. There's an additional mod you can try to supplement UGP, and it's called UGP Balanced for Gamma and it's currently available on the Gamma Discord. I personally have not tried it out, so I can't speak for how well it works, but I've heard good things. It's very important that you read and follow the guides when you're installing these mods, because they do conflict with some that come with Gamma, and you will need to disable certain mods in order to get the game to work properly. It's also important to load them in the specific order shown in these guides in order to get your game to actually load. I have noticed those of you that keep asking about where I get my weapon reposition mods from. Those are actually custom repositions I did myself with the help of people in our Discord, but I will be releasing them as one full mod once I finish the initial suite of weapons. If you're interested in how to make a reposition mod yourself, I will link to a couple great guides in the video description. You can also ask around in our Discord server and I'm sure someone will help get you set up. Starting from the top, I keep stalker headlamps enabled for more dynamic nighttime gameplay. I leave V-Sync off as it's more of a resource drain than anything. If you want a more stable experience, I do recommend capping your FPS, but at the end of the day that's just going to be personal preference. Rendering distance settings have a medium to high impact on your FPS based on how high you tune them. I recommend keeping static and dynamic objects at the values displayed on screen, but definitely mess around with the world distance to get the right balance of performance and quality that best suits your system. Texture detail and object detail are not too demanding for my PC, so I leave them a maximum. If you do end up adjusting these, I would not recommend going less than half of the values you see here, because then you start to get really boxy looking textures. I could not measure any difference in performance when I adjusted MIP bias or endostropic filtering, so I just left those at maximum. Anti-aliasing is incredibly demanding, and I don't recommend ever using it. If you're having issues with jagged edges, then check out the reshape portion of this video, and I'll show you how to smooth edges using a couple different ways through that menu. SMAA is an alternate method of anti-aliasing, but if you're already using Reshade for edge smoothing, I recommend just leaving this disabled as well. Detailed bumps, steep parallax, and tessellation do not have any impact on my performance that I could measure, so I just leave these at maximum. Grass settings are something you'll definitely have to adjust yourself to find a range that best suits your system. Leaving these values at a high number will greatly hit your performance, so only do it if your system can handle it. If you're totally clueless about how to work with this, I recommend starting with the values you see on screen. A word of warning about adjusting the grass size is that if you put it up too high, stalkers can still see you even though you can't see them. One other thing to mention is I don't recommend adjusting the rendering distance any higher than 130. Grass shadows look beautiful, but have a medium to high impact on your FPS. Lighting distance isn't too intensive on my PC, so I keep it at maximum. When I was running tests, I honestly could not tell the difference when I toggled the setting, so keeping it off to gain some extra FPS probably will not be an issue. Shadow quality will grant you smoother cast shadows in the world, and looks nice even when turned down, so a value of 0.5 probably will not ruin your visuals too much. Actor Shadow grants your character a cast shadow, and does not affect performance. The gloss factor settings are kind of a can of worms with all the different types of visual mods out there, but these are the settings that I find work best for my current setup. If you're using Zone Reality, then it comes with its own recommended specular settings, so it's probably best to use those suggested values if you have them. It's also perfectly okay to just leave this setting at default. Sun Shadow flattens the image quality and dates the visuals, so keep this enabled if you want the game to look relatively current gen. Shadow quality is not too FPS demanding, but you do start to get diminishing returns at higher values, so don't go too overboard if you're trying to budget your performance. Medium quality should be enough for most. Sun rays can have a low to medium effect on your FPS depending on which rendering method you select. 
Screen space is less intensive, but volumetric is more visible, but also more demanding. It's up to you on this one. Sun rays intensity adjusts the brightness and visibility of god rays, and don't seem to affect your FPS too much. So adjust these however you'd like. Screen space ambient occlusion is great for adding depth to your image, and SSDO is the least performance intensive option. I recommend keeping the SSDO quality at high or medium, because it can create some noise and artifacts in the shading. Volumetric light is a subtle difference in the way the game is lit with little FPS consumption, so I'd leave it on. Soft water affects the reflectiveness of bodies of water found in the world, and has a low to medium FPS impact. I keep it enabled because when it's disabled, a lot of the bodies of water show up as a little too dark for me. Wet surfaces can get demanding during heavy rain, but it looks really good when puddles start to form. If you can handle it, go for it. I don't really notice any visual difference or performance impact from any of the other settings, so I don't bother with them. Reshade is supplementary software that runs parallel to Stalker Gamut offers a whole suite of additional visual and advanced post-processing effects. Reshade will be installed and running by default if you install Vanilla Gamma. Various people heavily customize reshade options with a wide variety of post-processing effects to create different looks and aesthetics, and then save those settings as reshade presets to share with others. Whenever I refer to a reshade preset in this video, such as Norfair's Core version 2 or Prozac Zone 79, that is what I'm talking about. If you'd like to install additional reshade presets, you simply need to drop the preset INI files into the file path your reshade is reading from. You can view it at the top of the preset dropdown. If you'd like to set a different directory as a default, you can do so in the Settings tab. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about how I utilize Reshade. Earlier in the video, I recommended not utilizing the built-in anomaly anti-aliasing and using the Reshade menu to smooth edges. There are three effects I bounce between to accomplish this. The first one is FXAA, and I use this if I want to smooth objects that have a significant amount of depth or complicated geometry. It has a low to medium effect on my performance. I do recommend using some sort of sharpening effect in combination with this because it can create some blurry textures. The second effect of my favorite method of anti-aliasing is TFAA. I recommend pairing it with either Quit Motion Vectors or DRME for motion estimation. Otherwise you'll get a muddy image whenever you move the player camera. The third method of anti-aliasing I like to use is Immerse Anti-Aliasing. It's very budget and lightweight and can give you a little bit of smoothing if you're having trouble hitting an ideal FPS. If that's not a big issue for you, then I recommend using this in combination with TFAA, since it's not too burdensome. The reshape presets that I like to use are situational and vary based on whether or not I'm capturing content or playing just to play. My default preset for basic gameplay is HippoBot's Atmos R+, which should come with Gamma by default. If I'm capturing gameplay which involves lots of wide open scenery or foliage, I like using Kappa's Spring Preset, which came included in version 0.2 of Zone Reality. It's got incredible color grading for daytime outdoor shots and lush greenery, but will need some adjusting if you plan on playing in darker, more urban environments. Finally, a common preset you'll see in my videos is the Hunter Preset. It does a lot to replicate a faux high dynamic range, with bright highlights and dark shadows. Thanks for watching, and I hope I answered most of your questions. If there's anything else you'd like to know, feel free to either comment on this video or join the Discord server that's listed in the video description.